I went hunting for the first time in my life, which I'm like, I don't know how many times this is gonna happen, right? Five bears in the area, including a couple nice boars. Been a bit of a game changer, honestly. All right, we are back. So, um, what I guess this is the part that a lot of uh, a lot of you out there are waiting for. I've got Ashley Stuckless from High BC, another show on Wild TV, uh, and uh, I went hunting for the first time in my life with Ashley. How's it going, man? It's going good, Rod. Thanks a lot for having me back on the show. Appreciate it. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, okay, so a lot of as, as I said, a lot of people are waiting to hear this story. It's, uh, it's, it's a few funny funny parts in it, and we've got some B roll, so it should be good. This is going to be the version for the podcast, so you're going to get a lot more detail than what we told on the on the TV show because we were time constrained. Uh, but anyway, just to set it up real quick. Uh, we took two vehicles. It was me and Scott Carpenter in my truck. So Scott's the current president of the CCFR, also one of the owners of International Shooting Supplies. And then we were following you in your truck, which was you, Kevin Bustard, a good friend of yours, an accomplished hunter, and then uh, uh, your friend Jake. So who's Jake again? Uh, Jake is has just joined us. This was the first full hunt, second time uh, getting together the film. But Jake is... Uh, uh, a really good Sony shooter. Uh, I'd put a sort of a, a call out to, you know, folks that might be interested to learn a little bit about hunting uh, that had some experience shooting on Sony. Uh, so we sort of have a horse trade going where uh, he comes out and helps with uh, the capture uh, because, you know, up to this point, I basically filmed 99% of everything myself. Uh, to help me uh, with the capture uh, in exchange for, you know, some hunting knowledge, uh, learning a few areas. And uh, and so far it's been working out fantastically. Uh, he, he really, um, you know, he was up bear hunting this last weekend, texting me, you know, with, with some of the areas at so I could do some desktop and help him around and then uh, Having him out there with the horsepower on the camera has been uh, been a bit of a game changer, honestly. Awesome. Um, so we left the Lower Mainland in the morning. I think we, we hooked up at 8 o'clock or something like that, or 10 o'clock. I can't remember. But um, I remember you, after afterwards I knew, but basically we were on the freeway having to drive four or five hours, and you're doing like 90 kilometers. And then I, said, you know, I was with Scott, I'm like, what is going on with this guy? So I called you on the phone and I'm like, Hey man, are you on bail or something like that? And then I said, and then I, I seem to remember, like you said something derogatory and then hung up on me because we don't know each other very well. So I was like, okay, well this is going well so far. And then you were like doing like, I don't know, 125. after. <laughs> well, yeah. Then, then I, you know, I was on the phone uh, trying to get a few uh, work things sorted out uh, as I'm leaving town uh, folks on that in, the, in and it was 110 kilometer speed limit zone where I was doing 90. So, uh, yeah, so it was, um, me and Kevin laughed about that quite a bit and then proceeded to, I, I think I seen six police cars doing radar and traffic on the, the highway that way out. So I was joking that I'd be sending you the invoice if, uh, if I got a ticket after rather <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, we, I, you know, it is still my discretion on what we pay as far as invoice is concerned. But anyway, all right, let's get <laughs> let's get going. Um, all right. So we showed up uh, at camp and we were just outside of Rock Creek, British Columbia, which is um, probably an hour, an hour and a half east of of uh, Soyuz species. And we were up at elevation, set up a camp at around 3 p.m. And then right after we had camp set up, you're like, well, let's let's hunt for the evening because I guess that's a thing so kind of what happened the abbreviated version of what happened there yeah well as, as soon as we we get it set up there uh evenings are typically you know the most prime time for bear hunting for all animal hunting actually but uh for bear hunting specifically so I really didn't want to burn that first evening just relaxing so you know we went straight to work you know, we we ended up hiking probably about six kilometers, maybe a touch more actually, uh, and about uh, three or four hundred meters elevation gain. So, you know, it was a, a good opener. On the way up, we had seen uh, some boar breaks, which got me pretty excited because the weekend before I'd seen 
uh, five bears in the area, including a couple nice boars. Uh, one one chocolatey red boar that was pretty impressive. So I was hopeful that uh, that we were going to get on them get on them fairly quickly. Um, so we just took it up to the height of land to see if we could get on the glass and find them, but. Yeah, unfortunately, that that first night we weren't able to to see any game. Well, it was a lot of hiking, and I was like, "Oh man!" I <laughs> by the time we got back to camp, I don't know, whatever, nine p.m. or something. I was like, "Oh, I don't know if I'm gonna last all weekend." Because I mean, I think even that was probably the longest hike I had done in years as it was. But anyway, we got back to camp. Uh, I don't think we went by the time we started a fire and had dinner and you know shot the breezer a little bit. I don't think we got to bed till like midnight. And then we're up at five the next morning, which was Friday, which I'm like, I don't know how many times this is going to happen, right? That was a killer hike with, you know, a gun and a pack and everything. And I was like, hmm, <laughs> we'll see how long I'm going to last. But we got up and we were we were hunting right away on Friday morning. And yep. we, again, hunted right out of camp, but covered a lot of ground. I think we did uh, probably about 400 meters of elevation, eight or 10 kilometers. Like it was pretty crazy for my for my standards at least. Yeah, no, for sure it was. You know, I I basically hunted the area as I would you know with or without you. So I was super happy, um, you know, that you just ground it out. Um, I I mean, you know, I might I might have seen some some huffing and puffing a couple times, but it's not that I wasn't either. So I I was just pretty happy. You just. Uh, uh were right there on my heels the whole time and then as a matter of fact a, a few times especially at the height of land you were just charging out like i was sitting glassing and and you weren't happy unless you're looking over the next ridge so that was nice to see you know and and that's really what it takes to, to find these guys well that's just based on peer pressure man that wasn't that wasn't really me <laughs> I was told that, that like there's no doubt that that the expectation was to lean on you a bit, but you you took it for real, so you deserve the props that, that I'll give you for it. Oh, hey, um, thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not, it's, not a, it's not a platitude. It's it's real, like you actually did it. So I was I was pretty happy with that because you know we hadn't ever been out in the bush together, and you don't know. Like I, I've had some people that you know that wouldn't have been able to do what we did for sure. Mo you know quite a few actually so so it was happy that uh whether it was peer pressure or not that that you did it without complaining so that was good uh, i probably complained a little bit but anyway inside that's your internal monologue <laughs> yeah that, that you, you you were smart enough to keep it to yourself put it that way maybe that's what it was maybe i was just thinking did i say that out loud but um anyway we uh yeah we put in a lot of effort that morning I ended up seeing some grouse. I ended up seeing four deer, but we didn't see any bears. No. No. Um, anyway, we made it back to camp, I think. I think I got a note here. It was, yeah, 2 or 3 p.m. We were back at camp. I'm like, I need a nap. And then, uh, yep. but you weren't, uh, you weren't ready to quit, so you and Kevin went and did some scouting around. And much to my, uh, you know, to my pleasure, we weren't going to do any hiking uh, hunting for the rest of the day. We did road hunting and I think we covered somewhere around 150 kilometers of logging road, which was a lot. Um, but, uh, but we ended up seeing one bear there. Well, you saw him. I actually didn't end up seeing him. Yeah. I seen him. He, he didn't hang around too long, but he, he just dove down off the, the side of the road. There is a two and a half year old, maybe a three and a half year old, young bear um so right away i was on the brakes and and back to you and and uh you know i really enjoyed you just jumped out gun got it ready and and we hustled in but uh, unfortunately we weren't able to to catch up with him uh, you know i think i think probably if we would have caught up with him we we might have gave him a pass anyway even though it's your first bear i still kind of think he might not have been the right guy um but regardless uh you know, we, we got back in the truck and, you know, within a minute of being back in the truck, Kevin Buster breaks in the song about Little Rod Bear, um, you know, and how handsome Little Rod Bear is. And 
for for 20 minutes like he has a stick to itness that most people don't and he just kept hammering on it and um Jake was secretly filming it in the back seat too which made it extra special when I was <laughs> looking at that uh just having a roar so you know that's now an official thing uh we were out again hunting last weekend and every time we'd see a you know uh, a mature bear but a very young or medium bear we just call him little rod bear now that's that's just a thing oh well, that's good well at least something uh, came out of uh what was it? it was friday friday afternoon um okay so d- during that during our our road hunting i do want to emphasize how determined we were and unstoppable we were because there was multiple trees across the road that we sawed and hauled out of the way and cleared and pushed around with ticks fl- falling out of these things right all over us. We, we were not going to be defeated. So, you know. Yeah, no. And it was like, and of course my, uh, after, you know, us chatting and me telling you, you didn't need your, bring your chainsaws back up. Mine is freshly tuned up. Uh, it immediately let me down. So we ended up having to hand saw some of these, some of these trees and you know they're over 12 inches for sure a couple of them and uh and there's half a dozen trees to cut through but kind of kind of added to the to the stick to itness that we were that we were after bears and we were taking it serious so yeah yeah we weren't taking no for an answer that's for sure no uh, so uh what's next oh yeah so we ended up and you know, like I say, we did probably 125 to 150 kilometers on logging roads. Like, and that that even in itself is a rough ride, right? But nonetheless, back at camp around 7:30 or 8-ish, got the fire going, ate some food, and then back to bed at like midnight again. And uh, you know how I would kept going. This was Friday night, right? How I kept going, I don't know. But anyway, up at 5 a.m. again. Um, but we tried something different this time. You and Kevin and uh, and Jake went to uh, to glass an area around power lines. I think it's what it was, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Right. And then Scott and I, I think I had something to eat. And me and Scott ate, ate some food. And then we, it was just a little ways from the camp, but it was a really great vantage point. You can see just, a, you know, across the valley a long way, all in our valley a long way. Lots of, yeah, we covered a lot of area there. So Scott and I showed up. We were all glassing different directions. And then I think I might have been the first to hear some yelping, some barking, which, you know, there's no dogs out there. So it had to be coyotes or something, something canine. And then I think you heard it too, right? Yeah, I heard it too. Like you had hiked up uh, just just for a look around and, you know, you basically went in. I, I think they were firing off because they seen you come up that ridge line. So... You know, and you definitely heard, would have heard it first, but then, you know, between hearing it and then you, I, I sort of turned around at the same time you were turning around to sort of what's that, what's going on kind of scenario. And I'm like, oh yeah, coyotes yiping on the hill there. So I just went into a pretty good jog up the hill with the gun. And, um, and then by that time, you know, I'm looking around up there, we're both looking around and then the rest of the team joins up with us. Everyone's looking. We spot a we spot uh, what looks like a very large uh, canine on the skyline. Um, I had thought potentially that it was a wolf that had heard the coyotes um, baying and and just came out to sort of you know take him out as competition. And uh, but it ended up being a, a a coyote and uh, just looking down the hill, trying to spot us. And uh, 550 yards, I ended up touching up a shot just as Jake got the telephoto lens on the on the coyote. I was holding for about um, 30 seconds to try and give him the time, and fortunately, he was able to get on it. And as as soon as the coyote took a turn to leave, I touched off, and and it was coyote down. So. Yeah, you blasted her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I was there too. I'll witness it. It was 550 yards, 552, I think you you ranged it at. Yeah. So that was an awesome shot. 
Yeah, thanks. It was uh, it was good. Nice when it works out, and uh, you got the reward of having to uh, come with me to hike up the hill, which was the, the you know shortest distance, but the steepest ascent that we took in uh, in our trip. So uh, yeah, there's a couple cliffs there and what have you. So it's good fun. Well, one of the things I learned about hunting is just as we were kind of getting up close to the point where we figured the 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 coyote was. You said this is the part where we all start arguing about where where it was, and, and I'm like, oh, I guess that's a thing, and and I can understand well, that because it always does look a little bit different if you walk 50 feet in one direction. You're like, oh, where was that again? Yeah, for sure. And and you were in on it like an old hand at it for sure. <laughs> like right away, you were holding your ground at where you thought he was, uh, which he ended up being right, which was a little annoying, but that's fine. Uh, so I came down from the cliff above that I thought it, that it was on. So, um, but yeah, we were able to recover the coyote and, um, yeah, it was, it was kind of neat. Well, I was standing firm about where it was cause I didn't want to climb. I didn't want to keep climbing up probably is what it was, but anyway, <laughs> yeah. I was already done. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, the good news is we got a shot of that, uh, that coyote. So quite a, quite a creature, a lot of teeth in that mouth, but when we were up there, um, we heard the guys, um, uh, Kevin and Scott, were. we had left them down there, and they're screaming up to us, hey, you know, huge bear, huge bear, get down here. I'm like, oh, man, all the way back down. So we hike down, we hook up with those guys, and, and why don't you just give a brief description of kind of what Kevin saw and how far away it was. Yeah, so Kevin was just continuing to glass around that power line area, and then about six kilometers away on the power line, he located what, uh, you know, what was definitely a very large bear. Like if Kevin Bustard is telling you it's the second largest bear he's ever seen, you can guarantee you're dealing with a pretty big bear. So um, immediately we uh, we set to affixing a, a nickname for him, uh, which was Elvis, because uh, he was clearly the king. We had grouped up to sort of have a discussion about what would we do next. And uh, with him being six kilometers away, we, uh, you know, we just said there's only one decision. We got to go for him. So, you know, it ended up being a 60 or 70 kilometer drive around to uh, to get to the other side of this major drainage we were in. And, uh, and then once we got over there, uh, it was a little too early still for the evening hunt. The thermals were still going up. So <clears throat> we we then proceeded to go in about a kilometer away and we stopped and we had a good late lunch and um, and just waited for some time to pass so, so we'd have the thermals in our favor. So, you know, we ended up going back in there about... Uh, about six o'clock in the evening ish, I guess, and the the, um, the wind checker was was calling good wind, so we went in and hid behind a, a cedar tree till dark. And uh, unfortunately, all we were able to see was a, a couple mule deer, a doe with two fawns, actually. Yeah. Well, we called them in with the, the with a distress call, I guess, right? We did. Yeah, we did for the last hour because. He hadn't come out at the beginning of sort of the prime time feeding area. We thought we'd uh, we'd push push it a little bit, and uh, the fawn distress call can work really well in the spring for bears. Uh, and um, yeah, all we called out was the fawn, which which or the doe with uh, with a couple fawns in tow there. So yeah. Anyway, unfortunately, we uh, Elvis had left the building. And uh, <laughs> we drove back the whatever 80k back to our camp. Showed up there about 10:30, and again was up till about. Actually, I think we were up till about 12:30 on yeah. Saturday night. Yeah. And then we were up easily by six again. Um, I don't know why I, I didn't have like a heart attack or something, but anyway, um, we didn't really have any breakfast or whatever. We, we returned to the power lines where we were that the previous morning to blast around. Saw nothing, and so. I was exhausted, right? And I think I think most of us were. So it was like, you know what? Let's do a little target shooting since we're in an area where we can shoot, you know, anywhere from three to a thousand meters. So we did a little bit of target shooting and and called it a win from there. All that to say, yeah. um, I actually enjoyed Sunday morning a lot. 
Um, I can't remember whether we had breakfast or not, but we broke camp and headed out of the area at about 1 p.m. on uh, on Sunday, and that was that was it. Yeah, that that was pretty much it. Me and me and Kev did do a little Segway drive uh, in the the late afternoon on the drive back home, but um, you know we were we were kind of tired and and road weary. It's time to get back home to the family, so. Uh, so we ended up back home in the early evening on the on the Sunday. Well, I guess it was a real hunt from the perspective of it's it wasn't a canned hunt in real hunting, whatever, eight times if you're just a resident hunter hunting where other people are hunting, eight out of ten times maybe you get nothing. So it was authentic from that perspective, I guess. Yeah, it's as as, as real as it gets. And you know, I, I think I think it's kind of a you know, uh, uh, it's a blessing in a way uh, for this being your first hunt to not get one, just to just to up your your appetite for success and to to know that how hard you did work to get in there for that, uh, and, and just to you know that is the purest feeling of, of being a resident hunter. It's a lot of work for you know uh, a modest amount of success even if you work really hard. Uh, but that does make the highs that much higher. Like when it comes together, it, it's something really special. Yeah, I can, I can get that uh, 100%. But, um, but anyway, all that to say, uh, thank you for taking me on my first hunt. I guess you and I, we, we may go for another bear hunt, I don't know, in the next few weeks. I, I, you're very busy. I'm very busy. We're going to try to do it. Maybe I'll end up with a bear this spring. We'll see. I'll, maybe I'll use that tag that I was flashing around. <laughs> yeah, well, I, you know, I really hope we can get out for, for at least another two, three day hunt here in June. Uh, I have, I have a, a pretty good spot that I like to go uh, in June. So, uh, yeah, I'm heading back out again this weekend for uh a backcountry bear hunt, so I'm I'm hopeful that I'll have at least one one tag filled before I see you again. But um, but we'll go from there. Yeah. Well, in any case, it was uh, it was really great. I really appreciate you taking me out, Ashley. And uh, I guess we're gonna stitch this together at some point. And next season, so I guess about around a year from now, um, we'll have an episode on your show of uh, of our yep. uh, bear hunt experience. Yeah, definitely. We'll uh, we'll definitely have uh, this as what likely it, it's either going to be episode one or episode two of next year. Uh, so I'll have the turkey hunt, and then uh, probably the the Rod Giltaka hunt will be episode two, is what I'm envisioning. Well, maybe we'll have a bear to show from another hunt at the very end to just keep everyone from getting disappointed. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll tie that in, but you know. I, you know, I wish I wish we could convince people that uh, there's still a lot to be seen, uh, you know, outside of just that uh, stereotypical grip and grin. Uh, but we're definitely going to try for that. That's so, awesome. Anyway, yeah. thanks uh, so much for taking me and thanks for coming on today. My pleasure. Yeah, thanks, Rod. Remember, if you don't stand up for your own ability to own and use firearms, who will? Join the CCFR or donate right now at www.firearmrights.ca.